And now I'd like to introduce our conductor for today, Mr. Tony Ward. Good afternoon and thank you very much for being here. It was 290 years and two days ago that the world first heard Ihr werdet feinen und heulen, our cantata for today. It premiered in Leipzig, it was Bach's second year in the city. And it was composed for the third Sunday after Easter, which is known on both the Roman and, and Lutheran liturgical calendars as Jubilate Sunday. So named for Psalm 66, Jubilate Deo Omis Terra, shout with goi, a joy to uh, God all the earth. Uh, this was the entrance anthem for the day. This was the second cantata that Bach had written for Jubilate Sunday, the other being uh, BWV 12, uh, Weinen, Klagen, Sorgen, Sagen, which we happen to, uh, to perform here at the end of last semester with some of these fine people and conducted by Jake. Uh, so it was very clever of us to end both semesters with human logic and cadence. It was, of course, done on purpose. So we have this wonderful feast, Jubilate Sunday. We're three weeks away, for, we're three weeks after the ultimate celebration of the liturgical year. Resurrection has come. The promise of eternal life has been fulfilled. All is right with the world. And Jubilate sounds like it would just continue on that trajectory of elation and euphoria. But the title of my cantata is There Will Be Weeping and Crying. So we have a disconnect. This comes from the gospel reading of the day, John uh, 16, uh, specifically verse 20. Christ has seated his disciples in what might be the first recorded come to Jesus talk in history. <laughs> in which he tells them you will be weeping and crying while the world rejoices while the world laughs at you you will know great pain and suffering but your grief will be changed into joy now those of us who love anything be it our art our faith our family our politics whatever it may be we know that such passion comes with what I guess we could call a shadow side. Those days when it doesn't work out. Those days when we're challenged or threatened or tempted to walk away from it completely when the very thing we love makes us want to kill it. We've been through that no matter what we love. But we always come back to love. We always come back to a greater good, right? The end goal, eyes on the prize. It'll all be worth it in the end. This is precisely what Christ is teaching his disciples here, a realistic, on-the-ground view of discipleship. This is no walk in the park. It's a way to the cross. But that joy that they know at the end is ultimate and infinite. Like many of Bach's cantatas in this time frame, BWV 103 begins with a long and remarkable chorus. This one is a most among, among the most intriguing and daunting, requiring eager and equal investment precision, artistry, and stamina. Over a frenetic and desolate instrumental bed in B minor, which is wonderfully played by these wonderful folks here, two magnificently expressive performances play out. The chorus and soloists, in the throes of indignant imitation, sing a wonderfully crafted chromatic descent to symbolize our forthcoming woe, then answer it with, while the world rejoices, set to a deftly rhythmic staccato, suggesting being mocked, laughed at by the earthly victors of the day. Over all this, a soprano recorder part of magnificent proportions soars feverishly over all. Today we hear that played on piccolo by Michael. A unique and captivating feature of this chorus is that it is technically a tertiary work. Our heroic opening section ceases abruptly, making way for our bass soloist Armando to warn us in repetitive er, er, uh, and woeful tones of the pain and grief we shall know. He says it five times, he means really. <laughs> Just as abruptly the A section returns, this time a resolute reminder of the ultimate gift of joy in God's presence. Bach's attention to the word Freude in this movement and throughout the cantata is significant, elegant, and frequent. So stay tuned. Now the chorus comprises about a third, a little more, of the total performance time of the work, but there is much more yet to come. Christian Marianne von Siegler, the noted librettist and poet of Bach's day, who supplied text for nine of Bach's cantatas, gives us the text for the core of this particular piece. A wonderful formula of exchange is employed here by our alto and tenor soloists, Anna and Christopher. Each introduces the other's aria in recitative. Now the tenor asks us first to consider 
Our life in the absence of Christ, the grief when Christ is not present with us and to us. Setting up Anna's wonderfully dolorous aria, intimate in its prayerfulness, yet rich in drama. The soloist pleads for God's return, knowing that hope fills her heart. Now, strengthened by this hope, she then proclaims her trust in God and the joy she anticipates. That's a Freud alert. <laughs> this prepares us for the crown jewel of this aria, of this cantata, in which we finally hear from Charles, the trumpeter, <laughs> and are treated to a virtuosic and vivacious call to cheer by Christopher, culminating in an over 100-note melissa <coughs> that I can only describe as the queen mother of all Freudas. <laughs> to this point, the cantata has languished in minor keys and diminished chords. It is Bach, after all. But suddenly, this aria sweeps it all away, and we're in this wonderful D major. Now, after this aria, we invite you to join us, as congregations of the day were wont to do, in singing the concluding chorale. The text is by Paul Gerhardt, Lutheran pastor and hymn writer, whose texts appear in 22 of Bach's cantatas. In this case, it's the ninth verse of the 1653 hymn, Barmherzer Vater, Gott, a wonderfully tender and intimate por uh, portrait of Christ himself, consoling us with the promise of the crown of joy. This tune may be a familiar one to those of you who are Bacophiles, as this melody also appears in his St. Matthew Passion. Before we begin this cantata, I'd like to thank all of you, not only for being here today, but for supporting this Box Lunch series this year and always. Uh, I think I speak for all of us in the conducting program when I say this is a tremendous boon to us uh, as student conductors to be able to learn by doing the process of bringing these works to life. Thank you for supporting it. Uh, thank you to Dr. Bodhi for your immense support of this program and sustaining it over the years. Dr. Ely, thank you for creating it in the first place. It's been a magnificent addition to what we do here. Without any further ado, again, thank you very much for being here and enjoy your Verdet Wein und Heuler, Box Cantata number 103. <laughs>
Oh, my God.